Welcome to A Game of Ice and Fire, a video series devoted to A Song of Ice and Fire war game by Cool Men or Not. We cover all aspects of the hobby with tactics and list build videos, painting tutorials of varying levels, and battle reports. Welcome to the... I think this is like the seventh or eighth battle report that we've got now. And uh, today it's going to be Free Folk vs. Starks, and we have some new blood in the uh in the in the, on the channel we got a uh, good friend of mine local john playing starks now uh well, go ahead and introduce yourself john hi i'm john i currently have starks and i also picked up some night's watch yep it's easy it's really contagious like factions in this in this game they're so cheap to grab when we're used to things like war machine, war machine where <laughs> you know one unit is like a hundred and some bucks or I just spend, you know, $109 for one model. Yeah, your, your Bahi stuff. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your Eddard list you're going to be dropping today? Yeah, so I heard that it can be fun to add attachments to units, and you can add any attachment to any <laughs> unit. So I went a little berserk and added Great John to some Zerkers, and I had Rob on some Great Axes, and uh, then that left me with, me playing Eddard because I wanted to try Eddard out and I was told that if you're going to bring Eddard you should bring his sworn swords so his, his honor, honor guard. guard sorry so I ended up bringing his honor guard on him and then I uh, had enough room for some longbows yeah the the Stark Bowman yeah, yeah with no attachment though which is awful <laughs> and then you brought you had like Grey Wind for free oh, yeah Grey Wind because that came with John and then John. which NCs Rob. did you settle on I settled with Sansa and Catelyn. I kept Catelyn around because it was between her and Roderick, and uh, I figured Catelyn to tune up the axes, and then to help Eddard's unit once they start going down would be worth her weight more than Roderick would be. As a Stark player also, um, Catelyn just seems like you should always have her forever. Like She just is such a really good NCU. Yeah, four points to remove a condition and make it so your people are always seen it at their best number. Yeah. Really good, especially when I thought that that just meant green number. <laughs> However, it means all numbers. Yeah, so your berserkers are throwing their 10 dice when they're still full rank, so they don't, like, peter out. Uh, if eight dice is petering out, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> so for the free folk, I am playing just a small adaptation on the Mance list that I built earlier. Instead of having... Uh, the sh the spearwives and the giant in the list. I took the giant out and then just kind of tailored the the list with some attachments. I've got the uh, um, the matriarch on the spearwives. I've got a couple raid leaders now, and I think that ended up leaving me with the ability to grab one or two more. Well, it had to be two more raider units. Yeah, you had two. Yep. So uh, that was. Uh, it's also kind of like an adaptation from. Uh, the Adepticon winning list. I the one that played in that event was uh, uh oh, it was eight free folk raider units and then four trapper units with just mants. I think there were a couple raid leaders in there, but uh I also have Craster and Val just because they're the only two NCUs available right now. And I think it's good to play with two of them. So they both also seem really good, though. Uh, they are. They're great, especially for that list. Like, Craster either does what you want to do on the board or does what you would want to do with your better units anyways. Um, really good with Giants, too. Like, he's just an all-around great uh, NCU for the free folk. Um, I also think I, I really want to keep the Spearwives in because they give me a uh, high number of attacks that sustain... And they get sundering when they charge, so having the spear wife in there or the matriarch in there uh, helps them kind of prolong. They, it gives them prolonged like uh, output, right? So yeah, losing almost two thirds of the unit and then still swinging in with seven dice was really good. Yeah, it's they're they're definitely like I I think some people kind of poo on them a little bit because they're not you know three points or four points, but. Um, they're still a really solid unit, and I I, get, I definitely suggest any budding free folk players give them a try out if they haven't already. Yeah, and the ability to retreat and then come back in yep. after super, after getting hit was super strong, super great. So we can get into deployment. All right, so here we got the Stark deployment, 
and uh, I had intended to put the bowmen on my far left. However, I just kind of plopped them down without thinking at a certain part after looking across the board. And uh, that kind of was a mistake. But other than that, I feel pretty solid about where Eddard and Great John's unit ended up. And then Rob Stark's unit ended up over on the far left where I wanted the bowmen just to kind of make up that lack of anything over there. Yeah, with the Starks being able to get all over the place all the time forever, uh, deployment isn't so punishing for them unless you really commit to one side instead of you know messing around with them. But uh, we are playing Dance uh, with Dragons, and uh, my deployment is pretty straightforward in that just fit what you can on the table. Um, the Trappers are... The Trappers came down after... Like, I made sure to hold a unit of Trappers until Grey, uh, Grey Wind came down because I want to be able to go where he does so that I can kind of restrict the dog's movement or just outright nerf it when, when it moves. Yeah, that that was a strong play. Yeah. I didn't realize they had that order. <laughs> Interspersing the raid leaders on each side, because there's only two in this list, is is appropriate. Um, Mansa always kind of takes up the middle, and then I've got the... Uh, the raiders and spear wives in the back. Now, I think the spear wives probably belong on the front lines and not try not to be cute and do side plays. But I'm still trying to get used to how to deploy on a 12-inch space because on a 6-inch space, it's really easy with this army because you can't fit one or two trays depending on how well you planned it out. So it's just put them in a line and then bring the other ones on later. But the, the angling of them is just so that they can try and leapfrog over some of the raiders that uh, might have might be in their way or um, just run in a direction or march in a direction where it's going to be most beneficial for them yeah the ability to jockey for a better position with them is definitely strong yep so for turn one i rally up uh craster on the maneuver position uh, being able to just get up the table fast is the best thing to do with this list. And you're a Stark player, and I know you want that horse. I did want that horse. So you're meeting me by activating NCUs, or maybe you are, because I think you took... Yeah, I took a little while to try and figure out what it was I was going to do. And I'm pretty sure I ended up settling on bringing... Yeah, I ended up taking uh, Rob's unit forward. Oh, that's right, because we them. we war machined it, and you were thinking that if you took the uh, combat position that you could charge nothing. Yeah. But in this game, you got to have something at least in your charge range. Yep. So what, it's hard to, when you've been playing one game for so long, kind of forget the rules from the other one and not somehow have them influence how you're playing. So I think at this yeah. point, I decided to talk to you about how the free folk trappers work and how they just exterminate dogs <laughs> yeah that's that's where i learned this so i'm just like can i can i get that objective and and not die and uh in 10 minutes we'll learn that the answer was was no with the doggy but now by you... 10 minutes i mean i spent 10 minutes debating moving the dog yeah and now i'm we're just explaining how the wall works because the walls are funky in this game and that um they, they go away they, yeah they give you cover when you're shooting as long as you're not within as long as your opponent's not within one inch of it but if you move over it you destroy the wall and it doesn't hinder your movement at all but it also if you get charged if you're the unit that's getting charged and someone has gone over a wall you get that plus one to your defense save so walls are really funky and i think for armies that want to turtle up a little bit and play a little bit more defensive i think that they're really uh, a good piece of terrain to put down that i don't see very often also to talk about terrain for a second i really wanted to use this ridiculous kickstarter terrain that weirwood in the middle is the most pain in the butt thing to put down on the table because it's like everything is within six inches of it yeah so, so what just happened there was <laughs> he moved his unit forward onto the corpse pile and then i zapped him oh yeah with well, the crown mm -hmm. to make the uh objective fall out because yep. then again i was thinking i can charge onto the objective even though we're not within range and uh yeah, the answer to that is no. Yep. Uh, getting, I, I, my hardest, the hardest thing I have with this list in a Dance with Dragons or Game of Thrones scenario is 
if I don't get to the objectives first, it's so hard for me to peel off units that are on the objectives. So I end up starting to lose points real, real fast. Yes. Yeah, and so there you just got to see bows. Yeah. All of three guys hit. <laughs> Those, out of 10 the bows are really they're really hot or really cold like there's no real in between on them i think i also moved mance up here to try and try and mitigate some of this garbage of trying to zap my raiders oh man man it's so hard to play a list with man or with a list a list with this many bodies and not have mance as your commander because getting six plus morale is just really good. Like I've seen the new commander. I forget her name because she's not prominent in the show, and I haven't read up to her in the books yet. Um, she's that really big spear wife lady. She's like the vanguard oh, commander. Oh, uh, yeah, gotcha. She like I think someone said that she died off screen or something like that. Now she looks really cool, but the, her problem is. She's not Mance. You're losing that six plus morale, so I don't know if she really has like she give puts out a lot. She gives a lot out in terms of output, but I don't know if it's enough to mitigate losing all that morale. Yeah, and right here you were using the new templates that we got to attempt to uh, figure out how you were going to run forward without hitting the palisade. Yep. Uh, Harma, sorry. The, the, this lady. Got it. Um, I haven't looked at her yet. No, they she just they uh, the designer Michael Chanel posted her on the Facebook group. So it's like what her one of her cool abilities is whenever you claim the horse zone, you get to pull a card back from your discard pile. Oh, that is really good. And I think it's not instead of. I think it is in addition to. Got it. It's the right sure that I just is. ran Eddard's mm -hmm. unit forward. Yeah, in terms of trying to unpack my list into you, I really don't want to lose a ton on the beginning. So I like, you know, I want you to try and hit that wall if you're going to try and charge me so I can at least get a four up instead of a five. Um, I want to try and trigger some of the bad uh, movement decisions you have to make with the trappers. And it's really just trying because I know I'm not. First of all, that objective on the top screen is basically dead to me. Like, I probably will never get to it. So if I can jam up the Great Axes and keep them there long enough, they won't get onto that thing uh, anytime soon. But Great Axes are also probably one of the best units at killing Free Folk Raiders with Mighty Blows. Get and, a lot of dice. And it blows mightily. <laughs> you like that? I, I do. <laughs> uh I just played a card. I don't remember which, but I got to do a charge. Um, it was sudden charge, right? Because you put a NCU on the board and said, I'm not going to do X. I'm going to charge instead. Uh, that might have been it. It could have been. I still, like, I've been really, like... It was either that or pure lead by... A, no. Uh... It could have been Fury for the Fallen. Uh, I didn't kill anything though. You might have attacked something. Maybe the I don't remember. maybe the great axes, but um, I still have been dragging my feet on getting a second camera set up so that I can get a better look at the tactic zone and have a place for us to throw cards when we play them. Um, yeah, so I just did a Stark Fury, lost one guy, which was one of my best D three rolls this game. Yeah, lost one guy and took six or something like Eight. that. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a massacre. It was, it was a bad bad time for those guys so um edard didn't get to go onto the objective we tried to figure out if there was a way that he could dodge the wall or dodge or get to the objective but it just wasn't going to happen so now what i've got is i'm trying to stay away from edard's unit but get close enough to where as soon as that dog takes one step i'm gonna cut its balls off um so i think that uh their placement is fine I rather they would get the objective because like free folk trappers can hold objectives like all right, and you you're trying to long bomb a charge with. Yep, tried that, tried that. It it failed. Yeah, Great John's unit didn't quite pull it off. Nope, they did fail, which I'm happy for because the seven free folk raiders that are left there uh, probably uh, wouldn't survive that. Plus, it also puts you off of the objective. Uh, but since you're going first next turn, I don't think it's a super huge deal. It's just like a, a small consolation prize for me. And then I think at this point, I'm, I've got you out on activations. So yeah, it doesn't I'm, take much when you're out number two to one. Yeah, so I'm just like moving stuff around. 
Um, yep, then it ends. Yep, so we're on to turn two. And I at this point, I think I've got like five cards in my hand. Um, it's really hard to get the Free Folk p cards played in the early turns because there's so much involved with uh, having things engaged with two things. I think there's three cards that end up working like that, so you really don't get that until later. Yeah, I think I pitched two and then drew two mm -hmm. at this point because... I just wanted something that was going to be a little bit more impactful than what I had. I kept one card throughout the whole game, thinking when this works, it's going to be the best. <laughs> and I almost ditched it a little later in the game. Yeah. And, it, uh, yeah, we'll get to that. It's hard to with the Starks to keep cards that are like situationally going to be really awesome for you when you know you've got so much power in that deck. Like, Swift Advance is huge. Sudden Charge is huge. Devastating Impact and uh, all that is just... They're just insane cards. Tons of value out of those. But when you're holding on to something like Northern... Or Dire Wolf's Fervor or yep. uh, Northern Ferocity, and you're like, well, this is cool. Those cards are good. They're not bad. They're just good at a certain time. So right there, I just... Uh, put an NCU onto I probably cat yeah I put Catlin onto the uh, charge the S wards or the uh, into the swords yeah yep. and then Great John's unit gets a charge off of that and then she got to influence them so I would get the ten dice yeah that that Great John on any unit is just just absurd like he is a really for three points he's expensive but man does getting another charge for nothing is huge. And I'm left with one free folk raider, and he fails his stupid morale because of vicious. That was the it, whole well, reason. Oh, because I had that objective, yep. and that gave me vicious. Yep. <laughs> yeah, because of stupid vicious. So now Great John's taking a maneuver back just to kind of get out of range of things. And you only get to move two when you have that egg. So yep. that egg makes you makes you walk real careful. You don't want to drop it and crack it. Yeah, that was depressing. We want dragons. I wonder how dragon omelets would have tasted though fantastic actually be a lizard egg i haven't ever had a lizard egg me neither yeah. imagine it would taste like a lizard egg and less like a chicken egg but the more you know most lizard eggs are leathery though that's fair yeah oh that was a that was you going for yeah, your four or your like, five for that charge yeah i i decided to long try to long bomb this one i was like oh, well blue like heroes never and yeah, you played that one card that lets you immediately act, or was it the order? That Raider, the raid leader. Activate yep, another where I can chain afterwards. another guy in. So one raid, the raid leader goes in, long bombs is four. And then just wiped out <laughs> yeah. seven guys. If there's one thing that free folk raiders can say they're okay at, and I mean okay, it's killing berserkers. Because like the five plus save isn't good for them, and I've got like zero tricks. So they hit all right. And they did a ton of damage yep. to those. Uh, to those, yeah, that uh, was awful. And then your other unit workers. over there got to activate. Charge me. Yep, because like I said, I, I my real big guy. goal here that Palisade has the objective on the your side of it. That's why I took that side. Oh, that's the other thing. I chose that side for that reason. Yeah, that's why I wanted Bowman over there. So the the sooner I can get into you and stop you from taking that objective, the better. I know that these free folk raiders aren't going to last very long. But I'm just going to use the bodies to try and deny you the um, the points. Yeah, and then I Stark Fury again here. That was me removing the two people. I know that I'm doing it early. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it, it's negligible, right? I mean, yep. If you do the attacks with your full dice and then roll the D3 at the same time, it's not going to change how you do or how how you uh, how you roll. Yeah, and then this is me trying to figure out where can I go to get this, and the answer is really. It's easy. Just pivot, walk, pivot. Yep. And then leave everything on the other side of the table in your side arc because that's real strong play. And you know, the the nice thing about that space is it would have been a really good point to put down one of those peacekeeper uh, little pivoty arc things. And we're just like, I think we picked every opportunity to use them where it was really it frustrating. Right there, and it wasn't frustrating. Hey, there's that unit. Yeah. Like, and I try to do the side thing, which I don't even know if you can actually use the sides to turn them i think they need to turn from the front but I, i'm not 100 percent sure about that one i am i am not a uh, a geometrist all right the apocalypse has been avoided yeah so mance's unit went forward 
I don't know if they swift advanced or how they got there. Yeah, I'm not sure if they did. I know my, my placement was to see if I can shift forward or sideways to shoot Great John from the front or shoot Eddard from the side. So that was the reason why they placed the way they did. I was really hoping to try and get that shot. Yeah, so I shifted these guys forward thinking maybe I could remove a rank of Mance's unit. Oh, yeah, that's right, because and, I, uh, I was like, oh, of course you're hey, shooting success. these guys. Yeah, you, you take a rank I down. I got the rank as intended. And they fail-ish? Yeah, they fail by yeah. three, so that was not, not the greatest uh, the greatest thing in the world to happen. So Mance's unit's pretty pretty down and out right now, but they've used their order. I think they they used it on Eddard, didn't they? Because their order token is on them. They must have. I don't know where they used it. But now I played uh, Regroup and Reform, or Reform and Regroup. So I pulled four from the back unit of Raiders, and now, yeah, it, it had to have been Swift Advance. Or it no, was. it was the stupid horse emblem jesus um oh oh you played your ncu on the board <laughs> yeah, got it craster went on the on the, the horse so we move forward at full ranks and shoot eddard from the side because i can't see great john's unit to shoot him because of the way i placed i didn't think that far ahead i guess um uh, but we take a couple bodies off eddard's unit so as long as i can start whittling them down like that's just what i have to do i have to get them from the sides because of this garbage yeah i love that ncu spot a three, live there. a three plus save really isn't that great until you don't have anything that takes armor down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're then, like you're invincible. <laughs> yeah, and then bringing three bodies back. Yeah, real good. I brought the six that you that you mulched, but your three are a lot harder to kill. Uh, so now I'm, I'm trying to find a good place for the spear wives to end up. I think Val came down and put them somewhere. Um, oh, and then my great axes did all of. They did a decent amount. Oh, they I took out they seven of them. Yeah, they got I mean, it's not it's taking out seven of them for what they're wanting to do right now is basically like taking out five, like or two or one. Yeah, like they're really just gonna stay there. I thought that someone. Else, I thought that they flubbed at this point. I don't think they flubbed their. They, role. they didn't flub there. You just lost seven. <laughs> yeah. So now the free folk trappers on the bottom are shifting to shoot Edard's unit just to try and get some extra shots in. And yeah, do some save work. Them all. Yeah, you just fling them off. You're like, why are you throwing rocks at me with bolas? And and it's little, they're like those little bows that you get kids at the dollar store. I think that's what free folk trappers use. With the little bean bag on nice. the end of them. Yes. Then we just had six. Oh, and then the 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 objective I picked up forces me to lose D three people. Yeah. The vicious every time I attack. The vicious doesn't seem it, it's it's hurting me with those with those checks but it's not so bad see there i try to use it on the side and it seemed like it worked okay so i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure if what the, we were if doing wrong rotating from the side is good or bad for these but um i i really do like those those uh templates for pivoting because so many times i feel like i might move or nudge a model and i can just put it down and slap it around and there yes. goes that dog get out of here which yep. I at least Get I had a card yard. where I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to remove that activation <laughs> token here now. Yeah, the the North remembers. That's like kind of the one-two punch. You're like, somebody's going to try and zap my dog with an order. And, and then I had swords, so... And then you get that whole unit back. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm so pretty happy right now so looking bad. at that happen. So terrible. So I'm just like, yeah. I, I put the dog forward thinking, if it dies, it dies. If it doesn't die, then at least next turn maybe it will die yeah i just the dogs aren't a huge problem for this army especially gray wind because making me vulnerable is like a woohoo thanks for making me re-roll my one save um threading the needle on these guys was a pain in the butt they had just enough space to get in here the way that i wanted them to and then i did decide to change the way they were going in case great john's unit wipes them out or wipes the unit out that's in front of him uh, because those great axes, I'm pretty sure I'm happy with them just jamming all day or being jammed all day. Um, it doesn't bother me. But killing the berserkers to get to those bowmen is more important to me. Yeah, and then Eddard's unit activates, charges the this unit, and I tried to go at 50% in the other direction, and it was going to put me off the table. Yeah, so we're really close that's to a the. No -no. We're really close to the edge. Unfortunately, like. I'm a little bit on the rusty side with trying to get the, the camera lined up right, so I thought I had it well, but it's not perfect. And we're trying the new lights, and I'm trying to figure out the balance on those because I'm not uh, I'm still pretty new to the AV world, so 
now that I've got lights that have two different like knob knobs to adjust the, the warmth and cold light light bulbs, it's a, a whole new world for me. So I'm just trying to figure it out. So bear with us while we get through that. But the turn ends. We've survived with almost all of my units except for one, I guess. Yeah, a lot, yeah, I took one off, and then I was hoping for a little bit more damage from the Zerkers. They just... Yeah, and you scored a, a decent amount of points on this one. You got two, and I'm sitting at zero already. I mean, not already, but yeah. I'm just sitting at zero. Um, and then your Spearwives charged in, and that was, I think, what you had to do, because if you let the Zerkers activate, because that was going to be my first activation. Yeah. I had to take those Berserkers before they before they went, because Catelyn didn't need to influence them to do what they needed to do. And if they got a, a swing on those Free Folk Raiders, there's a good chance I lose them, and then that also means that they the charge gets much more difficult for the Spearwives to do. Yeah, so then there I played Eddard. Ninety nine percent sure I played Fury for the Fallen there. Yeah, so you get to swing. And on then an Eddard swung down below and only killed three guys, yep. which was a massive disappointment. Yeah, those trappers holding holding their own there. Because I was hoping to maybe remove that unit so Eddard's unit would get to pivot and then go into Mansa's. That's the the Starks are pretty well suited to go against free folk in general like you don't have a lot of units but you have a ton of ways of making out of activation attacks and that's what you need to do against free folk is that you need to really start wiping them out quick and early yeah and then there we were looking up the rules for how eggs go yeah because there was a um, question as to where it goes where it actually goes and then <laughs> hey look light again one of my one of my light bulbs died the stupid battery didn't last as long as it was prescribed to last so now i gotta get more batteries or better ones and maybe i need more charge but uh, now we're back to brian's light that burns with the fury of a thousand suns it gets a little warm yep <laughs> the light bulbs are literally as big as my head but they're really good for painting so spearwives did maneuver up a little bit with that egg um they're 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 holding well they're less than four inches away which is good for them because uh, charging needs to happen. Which I, I do have to make a, a side note about charging with eggs because I think the the it eggs, was bad. Yeah, the egg says your speed becomes two and can't be increased, but charging I think just says you get to move your speed plus some inches. So it's not modifying your speed; it's modifying how far you move. So I'm not sure. I'm not good enough with the rules yet to where I can say, oh, well, if you have an egg, you get to charge the extra distance you roll or not. Yeah, so Ed's unit just activated, did the kill. Yeah, finally just killed the raiders a little bit, or the, the trappers. Instead of going the full two that he could have, Yep, which was a mistake. Because mm -hmm. when you have an egg, you take every little bit of movement you can get. Exactly. There's no... Uh, you, you really, There's no such thing as taking too much movement when you have those eggs. I mean, of course, there's probably some situation where you might maybe, but um, for the most part, I like to try and get as much movement as I can, especially when we're, like, having a commander off. Um, I think this was just a really intense turn where we had to discuss a lot of things to figure out how we were going to go about um, the following activations. I think one of them was maybe it came up where... Um, Edard's unit was trying to charge, but then we re then you had forgotten about the two inch thing. Yeah, right here. That's what that yeah. was. I'm like, oh, yep, plenty of space. Because you were like, yeah, of course I can make this. And, and, I'm and like, then you're no. like, uh, not when you only move three inches, John. And I'm like, oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, life is meaningless. And then I made my check because Edard's honor card is really good. Yeah, having be, having the ability to just not have your your morale modified at all is really really good on that unit um, and then i'm like oh i get to put two people back and then it's like oh i need to make a melee attack for that yeah he is just eddard stark is such a do work commander um he's definitely a, a good addition to the uh the stark pool in terms of just commanders that are available on paper he looks really oddball like he's trying to rock star around with a three plus save unit but he really can do it like he's not bad at that at all oh and i'd use the card that let me activate a unit immediately after him yeah and i wanted to get rid of those to chain the, the the raiders so you could just take them off the table yeah i was thinking that if i could get the raiders off the table that saves them from charging me because they're gonna get there yep and that's the that could the with the spear wives for sure that's the difference between having a having um 
the unit get force. activated in one shot or one one turn as opposed to two, which is kind of like the free folk way, right? See right there, you just used it successfully. I did use it and on then the undid side. it. I, I for some reason must have not thought it was working. I also was a little. I think I was a little flustered right here because I was the thing about these little like pivoting arc templates is like. I guess the worst thing about them is I like to swing them around in my hand like a. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that what that noise maker is that clacker that kids play with that you just swing it around it makes noise, um whatever. And then it flies off into exactly the distance. Did you ever find it? Um, I have not found it yet because that's where I store all of my mats. So there's just like, it's an abyss. Oh, and I just put Catlin on the people over there because Ryan was kind and reminded me, you know that you have a, you know, there was a, a weakened weakness token, token yep. over there, right? And yep. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess we'll do that. Because I best. wanted, I really wanted to try and like mitigate the amount of damage those great axes were doing because they will mighty blow straight F's free folk units like hardcore just gets them hard. Yep, um, so got them another attack into me and then. I think with this one, though, is this the turn where I had played? Yep, there it is. This is the one where I, I think there's, it's, I can't remember the name of the stupid card, but it's the one where you lose all abilities, so that means that Mighty Blow and uh, and Executioner Swing. This is where they just do flood, anything. by the way. Yeah, because they didn't I rolled get all of three or four successes. Surrounded and exposed, that's what it is. So, um, and I think I had the, I might have had the, no, you got the horse this turn. Or the maneuver position. It looks like that's one of your guys up there. No, that's mine. That looks like a green base. I think that's you. So I, I didn't must have, have a put... reason to go there. I didn't realize just how good a horse is for free folk <laughs> until Brian just starts chaining cards. And he's like, Hur, look at all this happen. <laughs> yep. So Mance gets crazy here because I need to get two units engaged with Eddard to start doing work to it. And, I mean, and that was a good turn for it. Like he got five successes. Yeah, he got five successes. You flinged him off, but it's you you five. made it. And now and I'm then, at the point where all my activations can go. It's basically like everybody's got a raid leader now. And yeah, and then you just did that, and, I, and you had Sundering in that unit, right on the charge. Um, I I just had threes fail. Yeah, I, I must have put um. Uh, the the card where if you've got two units engaged, you get Sundering and uh, Vicious or something like that. Yeah, so then that unit right there... Sundering and Crit Blow, that's what it. it is. And that ended this turn. Yep, now so, it's my turn to go first. Yeah, you'll be the top of this one. And you got a lot of work ahead of you. You've got two units engaged with Eddard. You still have those <laughs> those Great Axes choking real hard Forever. on that first, that first Free Folk unit that got into them. So much so that the other raider unit is like, I guess we'll take the long way around. Yeah, so Ed's unit got the... <laughs> I played lead by example again right here, so Ned's unit took their 10 attacks in. Yep, and did and a I start hit with every no single reason at all. Hit with every single one of them and got a few crit blows in there, so those free folk raiders just choked. Yep, and then this is where I was like, what do I do with the bowmen now? Oh, they have plus two dice on the, on the charge. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's only three less dice, and I get to re-roll them. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing this. That's the... the go, go catch it, Bowman. With the uh, the Spearwives, I, I had kind of completely forgot at this point that they had a Matriarch, but the Spearwives, they really do get hurt by um, getting engaged first and not getting that charge off. So and this you, is the first time they did get charged. Yeah, and you, 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 click, you connect with six, and I don't save any of them because they aren't that great. They do Rockstar their uh morale save and, and then, then they, run away. they use the order to to run away after getting hit and then i i was like oh yeah i can only move two so i moved two back yeah but again i, I still need to re figure out if you uh if you add dice to the moving when you have the egg i'm not i don't i just don't know i don't pay attention to this to I those guess parts i just of the assume that so things much. like rob's unit when they have the plus one movement, they don't get that effect. Yeah, that's what I'm... The, they say you can't modify your speed at, at all, and that's what I need to figure out is if the charging modifies your speed, but I'm sure uh, the, the world will let us know yep, what so that, that means. That was me missing all of my armor saves and then getting an eight, and I'm like, oh, I'm good. And then, oh, wait, vicious because of that objective. <laughs> yep. Never mind. Yep, and then I I played uh, one of Mance's cards here, and I think this is... Um, 
because you were gonna you you were gonna activate an NCU, and I picked the two zones that I felt were going to help you the most. And it was the uh, I picked the swords so you didn't attack with someone, and then I picked the money bags so you didn't put more wounds into Eddard's unit. And I really wanted both of those. Exactly. <laughs> so I, then then you ended up taking the tactics spot instead, which is still really good for you. It's just not what you wanted. Yeah. And I now got some cards now Mance so gets okay. to take it. <laughs> He's like, that's my sword spot. And they oh, they leave. <laughs> oh no! It was the sword ladies that did it. Yep. Yeah. The shield, the shield, or the spear wives. Yeah, the spear wives did it, and then <laughs> they leave them on one stupid guy. So I'm like, okay, maybe we'll get a morale test to fail because they're still neg one from that because they're just, I think the. So you, <laughs> I rolled a nine. <laughs> yeah, and uh, because and you were you were thinking you nice. were think I was like oh John's of of course John has a dire wolf's fervor in his in his hand. And he's debating if he'll play that because then they become, you know, rock stars when it comes to yeah, passing they're missing it. two ranks, so they get like and what, you were, plus three. Yeah, you were like, I'm gonna raw dog this, and they they made it on a nine. Sometimes it just takes one doofus holding his own. Yep, and then I think that was the great axes that time. Yep, they they hit a bunch on some dudes, and they they murder the two that are left there. And so. then we spend time fiddling around. There's like little rocks. You can see it stopping <laughs> yeah. the little widget. Yep. So we also did play with the entire base of that weirwood as the actual weirwood effect too. So like there's that. It's it's covering a huge part of the board. But then that corpse pile then, is also really covering a lot yeah. too. So this is where – this is another – This and is You can funky. see my corner go outside that thing, and I'm like, ugh. Yeah, we – both John and I are well. At least I know I didn't play much fantasy. Very well, little. Um, so tray based movement games are really really new to me. So trying to it, it always feels weird when you're trying to figure out like the nuance of how to actually move something because we, fixed it. we were th- we if you just move straight ahead, then you would be fine. But you didn't want to give me your rear, so you have to spin around. And since that front and back edge are a little bit longer than the sides. Every time we had done it to where you were trying to get there, um, we kept hitting that palisade. So we finally figure out how you can move in a way to give you the objective and not hit the palisade. And then Brian's like, you know what? I'm glad we spent all that time because I'm just going to never see that unit. (laughs) Yeah, now it's like, now they're speed two and... My free folk. These are, these are my great axes with Rob, by the way. Yeah, it's so Rob's like, just, you, you kind of put. 10 points in that unit. You put 10 points in you, and you're like, I'm going to get there real fast. And you did, but now you can't go anywhere. And that's why I think we both, like, I had assumed that the bowmen were going to go to that side, and you. Because that was the right choice. The bowmen go to that side, the axes can go next to them to keep them from getting charged. Well, and I think it, when we came down to deployment, I was like, if you want to switch their spots, go for it. But you I did think tell we. Me that, and I was just like, I think no, we've. I put them here and you yeah. already deployed something, so I'm keeping them where they're at. Yeah, I know. It's, it's one of those things where, like, you learn through screwing up sometimes, and. I don't like to punish people for screwing up, but sometimes you, as a person, you personally, the one who makes the mistake is just like, nope, because if you let me switch them, I'm I not going to learn. Mistake, yeah. And, and uh, right here, I was, can I know what's in my deck? Like, how do I? Yeah, this was this was where you were you you were going to lo- look at using Sansa's ability. ability, but you didn't know what exactly was in your deck because you're, this is you? what, maybe you're like third <laughs> or fourth game now? Number three. Um, full games. You're a you're a fully seasoned war gamer, but definitely new to this game. So the more you play, the more you memorize your deck and your commanders and everything. But this is your first time with Eddard, your third time with the Stark faction in general. So uh, we just ended up having you flip through the cards on your phone because trying to look through the deck would have been a little bit awkward. Yeah, and ultimately I'm just like, you know what? I uh, I, I mean, don't I guess if I got a. I think it was a Fury for the Fallen. I'm just like, I'm just going to steal that back. Well, and that was, I think if you would have just said, I'm popping the ability, then you could look through the deck on your own. But I think what you were doing, you were flirting whether you were going to pop the ability or not. And that's why you were checking the deck yeah. without wanting to I wasn't to sure actually... I wanted to. Yep. And it's an anytime ability. Mm-hmm. So we're just, I, I, we missed the discussion or the, the, what led to this situation, but I played an endless horde. I have the horse spot and 
got Ooh. to pull this unit in and charge from the side. And I think I also played group assault on these you two. Sure did. So you've got sundering and minus one from the side. Yep. So it was like I was looking for fives. Yep. And you rolled a three, which is not real great. But then I think this is. Um, that is when I played the car, or no. I think you played Direwolf's fer Fervor first. For this, yes, yeah. I did. And That's then, because I'm just like, well, this is when I'm going to fail it. And you're like, yeah, but their leadership's not that bad. And I'm like, yeah, but this is where I'm going to fail it, Brian. <laughs> and that three would have wiped the unit, too. So yeah. I was real bummed <laughs> when I, I was like, I celebrated a little and I was like, oh, wait, Direwolf's Fervor happened. So now I'm, instead of getting back into the Great Axes, because I know they're just going to turtle forward with that uh, with that egg i decide to go the other way because maybe i can get another unit into edard um and i didn't think the spear wives were going to actually survive uh up there just like hanging out so um i just wanted to back them up so the other unit of free folk raiders decided to just run away from great axes and then there i had to switch out a raid leader because i saw it down and i was like that unit comes back without attachments, not with. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't confuse myself later and start raid leadering when I shouldn't have. But we're getting down to, like, the nitty-gritty here. Like, I think at this point... So I I guess we're, we're at turn five. I've yeah, got the top, the top of it. And I decide to make the choice of putting... I take, I'm taking away the healing spot because I don't want you to bring Eddard's unit back up. And I don't want to trivially lose my spear wives. So I think it was a good play. It wasn't an aggressive play because I really could have activated the free folk raiders that are on Eddard's unit to swing into them. But they don't have sundering anymore and they're weakened because that's the egg that the that or that the uh doofuses took. Yes, yeah, so I put uh Catelyn <clears throat> onto the swords. Yep. So that I could swing in with Eddard's unit. Eddard's unit pops their order to get two people back because it's real good order. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I swing in with the aid into the uh, the unit that Brian just brought back. Yeah, getting two dudes back a turn doesn't feel like a lot when you say it. But when you see it play out, especially since they save really well, um, it really does matter quite a bit. So I only lose one rank of Free Folk Raiders here, which I'm pretty thankful for. Um the uh being able to swing with five dice instead of six is kind of like negligible but i since edard has <clears throat> well i guess edard is not activated but i wanted to take out the bowman uh first just to get some extra so, points on the table then i went through and i played two cards uh fury for the fallen which i went through and retrieved earlier mm -hmm. so the edard's unit swings in and then I also played uh, Northern the North Remembers, and that's that what I one? that's what I was trying to dodge by attacking those stupid arrow guys first. Was that I didn't want to attack Edard's unit and then let you have an activation token on Edard afterwards, so that when I kill the Bowman, a third activation from now, you trigger North Remembers and remove Edard's activation token. So at least it's you still got to do it. It's just that you didn't get the other benefit from it. Yeah. So, Although I didn't put three wounds in, so is that not the moment where I did that? Um, maybe not. This was the. I think this was the. Oh, oh this is. This oh, because was we re, we, re, we had it, yeah. to rewind it because the like, triggers the triggers on Edard's cards plus North remembers are uh, a little funky in that Edard's triggers when he attack when the unit's, when the unit's attacked, attacked and then North remembers triggers when the unit is dead. So I just need it since I don't play. I haven't played a game with Edard. I just needed to review the triggers to see if they could be stacked. So we ended up walking it back to where you could get some wounds back on that unit from the North Remembers. And now I'm back to not being happy about um, Edard's, about Edard's the unit. World. Yeah, he's been holding that egg the whole game. We're both pretty decent on points right now. I think we're both at six at this. Well, or at least by the end of this turn, we're both at six. I know that much. Yeah. Because I think you're at four and I'm at... Yeah, uh, I think I'm at four. Because mm -hmm. I can see uh, the, where I put them. Yep, and I've been... the I've killed two units that are worth... Or three units that are worth points, and I've got one egg. So I think at the end of this turn, um, I go up to six with, with the egg there. Because I got it from last turn. So it would have put me at four or five. 
I don't know. We're pretty even right now in terms of yeah, points. Yeah, no, the, the points were neck and neck the entire game because yeah. I'm not getting any points for killing people. And you're, you slapped down um, on the, onto the tactics board and weakened the, uh, the unit that I brought back in. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Yeah. So I think I have another group assault here. No, no, I've played all the group assaults. So I'm just going in with the minus one, and I take a couple guys off there. It's not I'm not steamrolling the unit or anything, but I'm I'm still getting, uh, still getting some work out. We'll get there someday, guys. <laughs> yeah, this is like, I think one of your last ditch. Like I'm gonna swift advance this unit because like Edard's not going anywhere, right? So yeah. you smoke him if you got him. And it's like, oh, I can't actually charge because I'm an inch away. Like. If I roll the six, I might be able to get there. Yeah. Nope. Like a half inch <laughs> yeah. away. Yeah, it was uh, an unfortunate position for them. So. So we're just. Yep. They're just gonna just try. Gonna and, they're just gonna go somewhere. <laughs> yeah, those great axes. Like, they're a great unit. And a when great, they're in the center of the board. <laughs> yeah, a great unit of great axes. I do like playing. That's I had talked to you after the game about brandon hodor in the unit because then they get to play in the middle and survive a little bit longer they like eat that first charge and then can start execution or swinging um so this is my like i'm a jockey for a charge <laughs> yeah, i'm like we're getting out of here see you later oh, grandpa missed the part where you brought back a unit again and then charged me again yeah no we, now we had, i'm on the side yeah we we had we had said that one or uh, well you did it twice i mentioned yeah i brought another endless horde unit yeah. back and went in and i thought that i had played a gr another group assault but i didn't yeah and then mance's unit went through and healed back to full yep emma's and mancy getting getting the getting models back up from uh yep. so then i go up to six there and i think brian went up to yeah i think we're tied right now well. six and six um with the way the the points from the eggs shook out and then with me having three points so far from killing the bows the dog and the berserkers yep yeah that, that's what happened and then yep so the the end of the like right now i'm pretty i'm feeling pretty good i've got two full units engaged with eddard stark and his unit which is almost down to one rank and those yeah. great axes are basically like out of the game they're yeah they're they're yesterday's news and as far as i'm concerned like i'm never gonna see them and all they're gonna do is like Say, hey, guys, wait up for us. Oh, hey, guys, you want to come? <laughs> or, like, Eddard's like, you sit down over there, boy. I'll show you how it's done. I don't think that's how you put it earlier. You're just like, this is how I became the king. Yeah. I watched my daddy get slaughtered by free folk. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, Dad. I'll come help you, king of the north. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what you were chanting as you were running away from me. Exactly, yeah. And then my fr on the top of uh six i'm just like i don't have a choice i have to put yeah you've got to keep unit. that you've got to keep that unit alive because if you lose it i think the, that the game is done because i get an extra point off of the unit and then i take the egg too so at For the end of the turn point, i score so another one yeah and then i would be at eight and you would be at seven and there's no way you're getting back on me yeah, unless you get super duper lucky by crown zapping the spear wives which are now within six inches of mance Yep, so... Just... So there are options for things. Yep, so I lost a guy from Brian's attack right there. Yep. Which I'm like, you know, I, I think this unit's going to survive. And then Brian's like, ha ha! <laughs> Mance's influence thingy. And yeah. guess what I'm picking? Everything you want out of life. Exactly. And he left me no choice <laughs> yep, but so you... to go to the crown. Yep, you gotta crown zap somebody. And uh, I'm like, well, uh, I guess I'm just going to do the spear wives. Yep, and, and I think... What I've... else is there? I can't remember if they were in or not for Mance's thing. I they think either might they have were been just, just out. Yeah, I think they were just out when I slapped down that measuring stick. Um, I'm trying out the one that I got from Adepticon for the Free Folk people because I'm just like, I'll play with one of these 12-inch rulers and maybe it'll be okay. And I I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> I want my I want my incremental widgets back. And yep. so right screw there, Brian you, just three. <laughs> that stupid crown. Uh, I was like, well, they just, if they roll anything better than a three, they're okay. And then what does it, what happens? The dice are like, oh, you said you wanted a three. Um, then they die. So yep. now you're up another point. So now I'm now, r right now I'm, pl I think I'm playing to tie. Yep. And you're like, I, I need to kill, I need to kill Ned. Yep. N little netty boy has got to go down and this and is great snake eyes on that leadership <laughs> check and i'm like because you yeah. you activated and i played there's too many 
and I was like, come on, baby. And you got the double one, but then you played that stupid card. Oh, oh, God, so that good. was so frustrating. I was like, well, there's the game, unless I get really lucky. But that, that raider unit that's engaged on your side, they are weakened. The guys that can charge in are weakened, and Mance's unit is weak. Yep, I, everything's <laughs> weakened. And then, yeah, so Northern Defiance saved my snake eye roll. Yep, it sure did. And that was the card I had from turn one. <laughs> yeah, and you and were just I like, no, I'm going to hang on folk. to this one. It's a good card. It's, it like, really is. It was one of Ned's cards, and I had honestly anticipated using it on a different unit. Exactly. And yep. I almost used it on the Bowman, like the other leadership one. Yep, and we're just sitting here, like, really just... I'm, I'm just trying to, trying to get it on... On principle, I'm going to attack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nope, not even one guy. So that's the that's the game. We end up uh, we end up nine and yeah, six. nine to nine to six. So it was it was it it felt like the game was um back and forth. really back and forth. There was never a time where one of us felt like we were dominating the other one. And geez, the the timing of some of those cards was just phenomenal. Like not just for your morales that you threw down the cards for yeah but every time i put down mance's uh mance's commander card that uh can nerf the two zones yeah, predictable that... no not predictable maneuvers Predic- I thought it was wildling that. diplomacy wildling diplomacy hurt so bad yep. it was each time it happened it was so impactful in that you couldn't get what you wanted out of it and then the <laughs> otherwise i risk <laughs> losing the that whole unit last stupid one where i forced you onto the crown and then it caused me to kill my own unit <laughs> like that was that was some some garbage but yeah you, like had you not done that i might have you know i would have taken something else like the wounds or the sword yeah and then you would have taken the d3 plus two and then another condition token for edard so um, no i mean had you not played that card yep you would have had one more point i know like <laughs> it, it would have been or the differential would be one yeah um, the Spearwives do have a combat attack, or not combat attack, they have a shooting attack, so they can throw their spears or charge with them, so maybe they could have threw, thrown some spears on the side and maybe put some more wounds on, but after you passed your morale check and healed wounds for it, it was just like, oh, well, there goes that one. So that was a really well-timed card, and I think the game was played really well, the scenario went real, real solid, and mostly I wanted to, for myself, see how playing a 12 or nine nine units of free folk would go on dance with dragons because normally i'd probably want like a giant list on this one because i can run up real fast get the maneuver position and the uh the maneuver from val and then run the giant onto the objective right away and just sit there and be like yeah be like come at me bro and uh heal them back up when i need to and just keep racking up points I honestly expected to get giants. Well, I gianted you the last game I think we played, Ooh, yes, and I did. was like, I'm going to spice it up a little bit. I do want to play a five giant game on the channel soon because I think it's on the tip of everyone's uh, mind in terms of, you know, how does this actually play? Or four giant. So it was four giants, right? Because I think that's, that's the only... Last yeah, the four giant. I thought it was. I thought I said five for some reason, but it's four. Four giants that you can fit in that list. So... Um, We'll have a lot more diversity on the channel now. So we have John playing. We've got another local that's playing Lannisters. And uh, Tyler, as always, is still playing Night's Watch until he gets his uh, uh, White Walkers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching this one, and I look forward to keeping more of these out for you. Um, any parting words, John? The cards in this game are crazy. Yeah, they really changed the way it works out. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Yep, we'll see you all next time.